Hey, what's going on, everyone? Welcome back to another podcast with your host, Jimmy Bayoso. Um, I missed you guys. I missed hopping on here, sitting down, being one on one with with all of you guys. And thank you to all those that have been supporting me from the jump. Um, those that have been listening to me and even DMing me, asking me, you know, when is the new podcast coming out? Those that are also listening to us through Spotify, Apple Podcast, and watching us right now uh, on YouTube. Well, we're back. For all those who have been following our socials, who have been following me on social media, on Instagram, I was uploading how I launched my Sunday night services at 6 o'clock, and I really just put all my focus on that, making sure that the launching uh, came out great and everything was situated. So... That's why I took a mini break on uploading podcasts, but we're back now. We're actually this week, and it's going to be our fourth week on launching our Sunday nights, and it's been going amazing. And if you're watching or listening to me right now, you're around the Elizabeth, New Jersey area, you're in New York, you're in Connecticut, or you're just in Jersey, come through, pass by Sunday nights. We've actually had a group of people who have joined us who actually found us through social media and they've been joining and they've been loving it so be part of it come receive a fresh word be around the community of believers and as well just you know being able to pray for each other and just experience the presence of god all together like the bible says we're two or three or more are gathered in my name like he is there so um there's a new uploading schedule for the podcast it's going to be every thursday now um I was usually uploading every Tuesday, but now it's going to be every Thursday, the podcast. And on Tuesdays, I'm going to be uploading the message that I preached on Sunday night. So uh, Tuesdays is going to be the Sunday's message and then Thursdays is going to be the podcast. That's the schedule that I have going for now. Praying it works and praying it blesses everyone's life and share this with someone. If you're watching me right now through YouTube, make sure you subscribe. Um, I was looking at the analytics and honestly, more than half of the people that watch us are not subscribed yet. So subscribe. Uh, we're on road of hitting a thousand subscribers. So subscribe to it, share it with someone. Also turn on the bell notification so you guys can know every time I post and you guys don't miss it. And you guys can be up to date with everything that is going on. And as well, my listeners on Spotify and Apple podcast, I haven't forgot about you guys. Thank you guys for being faithful. Um, believe it or not, we have such a big community listening to us through Spotify and podcast it blows me away and thank you for all those who've been reaching out to me through dm asking me hey we haven't seen the spotify we haven't seen you upload on apple podcast i'm on it we're uploading we're gonna get all the content out there and i'm excited for it so as i was kind of you know thinking already about getting back on the podcast there was a word that really ministered to my heart and it was on the book of Matthew. I've been just really l reading the Gospels as a reason recently, which is Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And I've been just kind of just looking at the lifestyle of Jesus, wanting to learn more about Jesus and just um, seeing what the Holy Spirit would speak to me in my life. And believe it or not, I was as I was reading the first chapters of Matthew, it really uh, touched my heart. And the Lord really showed me something. And I felt to share it with all those that are listening to me and watching me right now. And it's uh, Matthew chapter 2. And before I even read it, I want to give a little background story where um, the king of Israel at that time, um, uh, King uh, King Herod, um, he was uh, um, he wanted to he asked for the wise man that had came, and the wise man had seen a star in the heavens, and they knew that the Messiah, that Jesus, was born. So the king inquired of them, asked them, "Hey." Go look, go go find him. Once you find him, come back to me and let me know where he is so then I can come and visit him. But as we all know, that that was a lie. The king didn't want to visit him. The king actually wanted to kill Jesus, wanted to come after him. Um, so the king, uh, the, the three wise men, they went, they found Jesus, and the Lord showed them, an angel of the Lord showed up to the wise men and told them, hey, don't go back to the king. The Lord warned them through a dream not to go back to the king. So when the king found out that he was tricked by the wise men and the wise men didn't go back, what ended up happening was that the king wanted to kill all those who were, I believe, two or three years and under of that age. He wanted, he, he wanted to kill all the children, all the male children of that age because that was between the age that he knew that that's the age that Jesus had at that time. And the reason why I'm sharing this is because there was two things. One... A lot of times the Lord speaks to us about things and one, we're always looking for confirmation and confirmation and confirmation about things. And two, when the Lord speaks to us, we're not quick to obey. 
or number three, you know, we just simply just don't know how to hear God's voice or don't know when is God really speaking to us. So we can see that the wise men here from the summary that I just gave you, the Lord showed up to them in a dream and told them, hey, don't go back to the king, go another way. And they obeyed, right? Look how quick that obedience was where imagine if these wise men would have came back to the king. You know, I'm pretty sure Matthew would have been written differently. A lot of things would have happened differently. But because it was God's purpose and these were people who were just and obedient, you know, they were really just obeyed what the Lord showed them. Um, the things that happened, happened. And the real part that I really wanted to really speak on was about Joseph, which was, in other words, like Jesus' stepdad, and which was Jesus, uh, Mary's husband. And the Bible can t tells us how Joseph was a just man. And we can see in Matthew chapter 2, um, verse 13, it says, After the wise men were gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Listen to this. Get up, flee to Egypt with the child and his mother. And the angel said, stay there until I tell you to return. Because Herod or Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. And look what verse 14 says. That night, Joseph left for Egypt with the child and Mary, his mother. Then they stayed there until Herod's death. And this fulfilled what the Lord has spoken through the prophet. I called my son out of Egypt. So we can see in this moment that the angel of the Lord showed up to Joseph and told him, hey, grab your son. I mean, grab Jesus, you know, grab Mary and flee to Egypt because the king wants to kill Jesus. Right. And the Bible says, look at this. It says. He immediately that night, Joseph left for Egypt with the child and Mary. And it's like that's one of the Lord things. One of the things that the Lord was really ministering to me was like, let's not hesitate in obeying God. Like how many times has God told us to do something, but we hesitate. We wait on it. Like the Lord tells us, hey, start this. Open up the YouTube channel. Hey, go talk to this person. Hey, uh, stay at that job. Hey, open up your business. Um, leave that church, you know, like go, I'm sending you somewhere else. All these things are stay at that church. Like I have, I, I have something planned for you here. Like I I've planted you here or so many other things where the Lord has told us and spoke to us like, Hey, pick up your Bible, simple things like that. Hey, like, you know, go to your prayer room, close the door and, and seek me in privately or, Hey, stop hanging around with these people. Uh, stop listening to the stuff you're listening to or whatever it is that the Lord is telling you, right? How many times have the Lord spoke to us and we're hesitating? And what marked my attention so much was how Joseph instantly, as the Lord spoke to him, he said that that night Joseph left for Egypt. Imagine you're living wherever you're living right now. Out of nowhere, the Lord visits you, speaks to you at night through a dream, a vision, something, and he tells you, get up and leave, Right? Many of us would probably be like, you know what? No, let me call everyone. Let me tell them what I'm doing. Let me go ask all these people. Really, God wants me to do this. Um, was it really the Lord? Nah, it was just something bad that I ate the night before. So many things that we start hesitating on and we don't obey it. And God's timing is perfect. God's timing, like there's opportunities and doors that God opens in a specific moment that if we don't enter them, we might miss our season. We might miss the opportunity, the blessing, the door that God has for us. And God is a good God that he has so many opportunities lined up for us. But there's certain special ones that will determine a new season in your life. But because you've hesitated and haven't obeyed and haven't taken the, the right step, the right decision to obey in that moment. Because check this out. When we don't obey in the moment, when we obey later on, that counts as disobedience. God wants a generation, a people, you that are listening and watching me, for you to obey him instantly, for you to move when he tells you to move, and for you to stop when he tells you to stop. And we can see that Joseph was a just and obedient man, that he got up and he left for towards Egypt. In other words, for you to understand me, that's like you, the Lord telling you, and then to move somewhere and then you just get up 
and you go to another country, another state, instantly right there without hesitating. Like, that's crazy. But this is the thing. When God speaks to us, it's always going to be crazy. Our mind is always going to want to reject it. Our mind is always going to want to doubt the things that God speaks to us because God's things, like God is a spirit. God doesn't move in our time. God moves in his time. And I promise you that always when God speaks to you, he's going to speak to you something that is crazy for us, but for him, they're normal things. So, and imagine if Joseph would have disobeyed in that moment. Imagine if Joseph wouldn't have gone to Egypt. What would have happened to Jesus? Because the king was looking to kill, to kill a Jesus, but he obeyed. He got up and he left. So, a lot of us are in this situation where God speaks to us and they're like, why do I have to do it? Why is it me? Why is it me the one that has to break the generational curses off my family? Why is it me that, that always has to speak up? Why is it me that I always have to do something? Why is it that I'm always the one that has to stand up? Why is it me the one that always has to, uh, you know, start the business, start this, start that? It's because God is calling you. God marked you. God placed a specific grace in your life. Why is it me always the one that has to be the one who solves and brings peace into my family? Because God called you. Because God put a specific grace in your life for you to be able to do the things in which he called you to do. And we need to, be, and we need to learn to stop questioning God's hand and God's voice and start obeying it. Because one moment of disobedience can stop us from entering into our new season, which God has for us. And I think that's a word for someone that is watching and listening to me right now. If God spoke to you about something, obey it now. Don't wait for tomorrow. Don't wait for the next day. Don't wait for next week. Don't wait for next month. Start now because what God has told you, he's going to prosper all your ways and all he does. And check this out. Like, number two, it's if Joseph wouldn't obeyed, there would have been consequences to it. And this is a big one because it's like, how many of us has God not spoken to us about something? And then when we don't obey, we ask and question ourselves, why did God allow this to happen? Why is this going on in my life? You know, why are things going this way? It's because God had a plan A for you, but since because we thought we knew better or we wanted to disobey or because we wanted to wait on so many other confirmations from other people and all these things and just really make sure it was the Lord, which there's nothing wrong with that, but there's moments where God speaks to you and you need to act now. Like I always say this, you're your biggest prophet. There's people out here who are always waiting on words from God. I want this prophet to prophesy to me. We go to so many conferences and so many places. What is the Lord saying to me? What is the Lord saying to me? Not knowing that the Lord wants to speak to you and first speaks to you and then confirms it through someone else what he first spoke to you. I don't know if we got that. Like, I grew up in church, so I know what it is to see and even myself be after the voice of God, not knowing that the voice of God is inside of me. Like when the Lord is personally speaking to me, but I want to wait and confirm it with 10 million other people and still doubt it then. There's things that God wants to see. Will you be obedient to me when I speak to you? And this is one of the keys in really hearing God's voice more accurately, more frequently. And recognizing his voice is when you obey, where you don't hesitate in obeying. And check this out. There are consequences to not diso- to disobeying God's voice. You know, like God is love, but the Bible also says that God corrects those he loves. And a lot of times we're in seasons in our lives and we're in the mud we're in and we're in the situation we're in because we are not obeying God. We know what we need to do, but because we don't want to do it or because it hurts or because it's too much or because the Lord is asking for too much that we don't want to do these things. Yet when you're in the trial and you're stuck in that pain, in that misery, in, in, in that hurt. You want to ask yourself in that moment, God, help me, God, help me, God, why am I going through this? Is it because of your lack of disobedience? Is it because the Lord told you to do something and you're still not doing it? Like the Lord told you to let go of that boyfriend, that girlfriend, but you still haven't done it. The Lord told you to let go of that friend group. The Lord told you to stop listening and watching certain things, but you're still doing it. You know what I mean? The Lord told you to stay in that relationship or the Lord told you to stay at that church, stay at that job or leave that job. What is the Lord telling you? Because let me tell you, if you disobey God's voice, there will be consequences to it. There's no way to sugarcoat that. Yes, God's mercies are new every single day. Yes, God is good, but God cannot be mocked. 
And I think that's a Bible verse that a lot of people we skip over, where the Bible says that God cannot be mocked. Whatever a man sows, that is what he's going to reap. So, wow, I have an alarm going off. I'm sorry. Um, so, you know, this is a big thing where it's like, when God speaks to us, are we obeying or are we disobeying? Or are we obeying when we want to obey? Or are we obeying but we're obeying late? There's moments, split seconds that God has an opportunity for us that if we don't take advantage of it, you know, there's consequences to it. We won't enter into that new season. So, number one, obey, instant. Two, there's consequences to when, to when, you, don't, when you don't obey God's voice. You know, and that one of those consequences, too, that I've seen in my personal walk is that you stop hearing the voice of God, that inner small voice, that inner witness, that holy like the Holy Spirit stops speaking to you. Because why is he going to obey? Why is he going to speak to someone who is disobeying? You know, and this is the thing is that if you want to hear God's voice more frequently, if you want to hear God's voice more accurately and if you want to discern what's the voice of God, start obeying, start doing the little things God told you to do. Like, if you want God to speak to you in big situations and in big scenarios and in big things, start obeying God in the small little steps. Start obeying God in the little things that he's asking for you to do. And number three, it's Joseph's patience and faith. Because check this out. The angel of the Lord, the Lord told him, and he said this. It says, stay there until I tell you to return. Check that out. Stay there until I tell you to return. And then we can see here in verse 19, if we go a couple of verses down, it says, when, when Herod died, or Herod died, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt. It says, get up, the angel said. Take the child and his mother back to the land of Israel, because those who were trying to kill the child are dead. And I, and I was searching it up and doing my research, and theologians, people say, Bible scholars say that it was, it's, that Jesus was in Egypt for about two to three years. So imagine how in those two to three years, what was Joseph doing? That Joseph was being obedient and he was being patient. Because when you're patient, that means you have faith. Imagine us. The Lord tells us, hey, I called you to this job, right? But you're going through some stuff maybe at work. Maybe things that you don't like. But if the Lord hasn't told you to left it, why are you trying to leave? If the Lord gave you a position... The Lord told you to start a YouTube channel, an Instagram, a podcast, but yet you haven't seen the, a blog, but you haven't seen the fruit of it yet. Just because you haven't seen the fruit, if the Lord hasn't told you to stop doing it, stop, like, don't stop. Continue doing it. Because imagine, Joseph, the Lord told him, stay there until I tell you to leave. And he stayed there for about two to three years. Imagine being in Egypt out of nowhere. You got up and you left and you were somewhere stuck for two to three years with your child with the child that your wife just had, like he was there with his wife, Mary. And he's there and he's not moving for two to three years, waiting. Check that out. Waiting to hear back from the Lord again. There's a lot of us that need to learn how to wait in our life. If the Lord told you to do something, do it. And don't stop until he tells you to stop. Don't give up. Even if it's not going the way you think it's not going, if God told you to do it, he will prosper it. Just be patient. And have faith and learn to wait. That until you don't hear God's voice, don't act. And I think that a lot of us, and this is something that I've been practicing in my life, is that if God hasn't told me to stop, if God hasn't told me to do anything, I'm not going to move. If God hadn't, hasn't told you to go to the left, don't go to the left. If God hasn't told you go to the right, don't go to the right. Because let me tell you, if we start moving in our own strength and we start doing things the way we want to do them, I guarantee you there's going to be consequences and there's going to be processes in our life that we are going to go through that it was never God's will or intention for us to go through that because of our disobedience and because of us just getting desperate and doing things that God never called us to do. So if God told you something, obey it instantly. Don't hesitate on it and have faith and trust in the process. In the midst of not hearing anything, stay and wait until God speaks to you again. And that's exactly what Joseph did. Stayed in Egypt for about two to three years. And then the angel of the Lord said, hey, now you're good. Now you can go back because the people who wanted to kill Jesus have now died. And that's the same thing the Lord wants to do to you. Before you get stuck in trouble, before you get stuck in a problem, the Lord would tell you, hey, your enemies are gone. Now you can go and do it. Hey, it's cleared up. Like, go and do it. So I think that was a word for someone because it definitely was a word for me. 
that we need to do only what God tells us to do. Before you do something in life, before you take a decision in life, before you get a, say yes to that job, before you say yes to that relationship, before you say yes to anything in your life, first consult it to God. Let his ways become your ways. Let what he thinks becomes what you think. And let what you do become, like, let what he does become what you do. And that is key. Let us be guided by God. The Bible says that those that are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. If you are a daughter of God, if you are a son of God, you need to be led by him. Your Christian walk needs to be led by him. In your job, in your school, and everything you do, be led by God. Because this is something that I always will repeat. God wants to be personal with you. He's not just interested in what happens in the four walls of church. He's interested in your daily walk and your daily situations and your daily problems and your daily things that you are doing. God is very interested in that. And he wants you to involve him in all of that. So when you involve him in all of those stuff, he will give you a light at the end of the tunnel. So I hope this message really helped somebody. I hope, you know, it was clear. Um, it was able to be transmitted properly and you were able to really get the full message of just, you know, learning to trust God when he tells us something. Stop going crazy looking for so many words. If the Lord spoke like you're your biggest prophet. And number three, wait until God tells you to do something. If he told you to do something, start it. It don't matter how many years. Don't question it because that was one of the problems that the people of Israel had. When they got out of Egypt, they were questioning. They were always blaming God. They were always, um, you know, bad talking. They were just always negative about everything. Don't be that person. If God tells you to do something, be patient. Keep your mouth shut. Like Proverbs says, in much talking, there is sin. So let's be sensitive and keep our mouth shut. You know, it's hard, but it's possible and it's doable with the grace of God. So, I want to pray for everyone that is watching me right now. And I just pray that this word may enter your heart and may give fruit in your life. And that we may be not just hearers of the word, but doers of the word. And I pray that you that are watching me right now, you know, if you've, if God has spoken to you about many things and you've disobeyed, ask him right now, Holy Spirit, I repent for grieving you. I repent for quenching you. I repent for being disobedient in the things you've spoken to me. Lord, from this moment on, when you speak to me, Give me the grace and the ability to obey you because I want to hear you. The Bible says that his shepherd, his sheep know his voice. You know, the sheep knows the shepherd's voice. You need to know God's voice for your life and your family and everything you do. So God bless you guys. Thank you much for, for tuning in on podcast, uh, to this podcast on YouTube, on Spotify, on Apple Podcasts. I love you guys so much. Stay tuned. We're getting started again. Every week there's a new podcast. And I have so many topics lined up that people have been asking me to speak on and just a couple of guests also lined up. So I'm really excited. Thank you guys. I love you guys. Don't forget to share this video with someone. Like, subscribe, comment. Let me know what you guys think. And I'll see you guys next week on next week's episode.